So let's stay on the topic of weather. And cloudy days continue for Vince McMahon. <laughs> what a transition. An article in the New York Post, Jim. Vince McMahon accuser Janelle Grant wrote love letter, and that's in quotes, to ex-WWE CEO after alleged sex abuse, but claimed she was coerced. Article by Shannon Thaler. Did you see this article? You've been following this? It's been a lot going on this week. Well, I've had a lot going, like you said, trying to keep up with everything. and and But I have heard the initial story, had read the initial report that there were love letters, whether they were in the sand and they were uncovered is not for me to say, but there were love letters that have come to light written to from Janelle Grant to Vince McMahon that are all lovey-dovey and the rebuttal at the time from the defense was that she was coerced into writing these letters. And I don't really have any other details because of, you know, subverting death's intentions and all that type of stuff this week. So can you, Brian, elucidate me along with the rest of the listeners as to more facts of this situation? A woman who alleges she was sexually abused for years by Vince McMahon wrote a gushing love letter to the former WWE CEO in which she declared the duo was, in quotes here, in love with a capital L. And she now claims McMahon coerced her to do it. The Post has learned. Janelle Grant, whose bombshell lawsuit landed a day before the wrestling icon abruptly stepped down as executive chairman of WWE parent TKO Group Holdings, and a lengthy email to McMahon dated December 24th, 2021, Christmas Eve, in which she called him my best friend, my love, and my everything. The quotes continue here. After almost three years together, it's like my life isn't even real to me unless you're there and in it, and I'm sharing it all with you. Grant, 43, wrote in the Christmas So Eve she is 43, we've confirmed that. Well, I, we confirmed it a while ago. You, I think, assumed for what the story was that she was younger, and it was briefly... There was reporting to that, to that end, but, I, but she is, yes, an older, older woman. The love-struck letter stands in contrast to the allegations in her explosive lawsuit filed in Connecticut Federal Court in January, which claimed that McMahon allegedly defecated on Grant's head during a threesome... <laughs> in May of 2020, some 18 months before she wrote the alleged love letter. But Grant, well, I'll stop there. Uh, any <laughs> thoughts on this initial story at all, or do you think you Well, no, I have some, but I'd rather you get the whole thing out because I don't want anybody to misconstrue my comments. But Grant's attorney, Ann Callis, told The Post that McMahon actually instructed Grant to write the note. Here's a quote from the attorney. Frankly, it's pretty disgusting that Vince's weeks late attempt to defend his horrendous behavior, behavior he claims that his day never happened, is to try to showcase letters that Vince himself coerced her to write. His psychological torture of her continues, as is typical of abusive predators who respond to women speaking out with increased threats. While Janelle isn't a stranger to his intimidation tactics, this is a new low, even for him. And I apologize for any noise in the background, because I hear something now. <laughs> the window may have to close soon. Asked about the coercion allegations, McMahon's attorney, Jessica Taub Rosenberg, of the law firm Kasowitz Benson Torres, by the way, that was the law firm representing MLW, that was the law firm that Corp Bauer's wife worked at. I, I was works about to say, a very uh, interesting correlation here. Uh, as they said to the Post, this is revisionist history. No one coerced Miss Grant to write that letter. She wrote it on her own accord. The fact that the letter shows it was the 24th draft speaks volumes. Now, explain to me what that means. So if you were on your computer, like in a program like Word, and you were going to write an email to, let's say, me, and you wrote your first draft, and then you read it, and you said, you know, I, I got to make a few changes. The changes you make, that's draft two. And then if you want to make more changes, draft three. You may not make that many drafts. You may just send it out the way it is, the first draft. She made, according to this, 24 drafts before she sent the letter. 
Well, but now, okay, does that mean like if you back up and if you mistype and you put an S on the end of the word and you back up and delete that, is that like another a new draft? No, I think it would go with each save, probably. But uh, okay, I, I've been, uh, well, see, I'm not see, exactly certain, but I think see that's that exactly that's the thing. If every email I send would have 45 drafts, if that was the case. <laughs> but okay, I just wanted to confirm. Go ahead. I'm I said sorry. fuck where I should have said shit. What? Yeah, the I, fuck? yeah. I, oh shit! I put an extra, and I always put T E H instead of T H E, and I oh, can't because of my OCD. Thing. I can't send out anything with misspellings. So I always yeah, anyway. Go ahead. Continuing with the quote from uh, Vince McMahon's attorney Rosenberg, nowhere in her voluminous complaint. That is replete with fabrications. Does she mention being coerced into such behavior? The language of the letter is consistent with other communications she made to Mr. McMahon over the course of their consensual relationship. Meanwhile, a spokesperson. I for wonder how long he worked on that statement to get all the good words in. And by the way, I have the email here, so I'll finish the article and we'll see how much of it we want to check out. Uh, meanwhile, a spokesperson for Grant revealed that on December 21st, three days before sending the letter, Grant texted McMahon that she had surgery on her pointer finger, <laughs> saying, and this is a quote, I think I'm tapping out today. In the alleged text exchange obtained by the Post, and the picture of it is right here in the article, uh, and I've sent this to you, Jim, in case you did want to see it at some point. Oh, well, I'll, I'll look for that while you're reading. Uh, which was not included in Grant's lawsuit, but alleged as genuine by a spokesperson for Grant, McMahon responded, Damn it! Sorry, baby! Following it with two more... I can't believe this is Vince McMahon. Following it with two heart emojis. <laughs> and then she replied, How will I write your letter? I can type and read it, or try to write it in a couple of days... I'm so sorry if I mess this up. I want you to have a nice letter. Oh my God, it's his Christmas present. With a frown emoji. Oh, and, and she's got a picture of her fucking finger taped up uh, to indicate that. She, she just had surgery, a port in my right arm and just had a surgical procedure on my left finger and there's a picture of her finger all wrapped up in her hand and everything. Uh, so, yeah, <laughs> the dirty old man demanded that she write him a fucking gushy letter for his Christmas present, don't you think? Well, let me continue here. Grant's rep, who asked to remain unnamed, also said that Grant had written love letters at McMahon's request so many times that she resorted to padding them with existing material from pop culture <laughs> including a GQ interview with Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly, published two months before Grant's letter. In the GQ piece, for example, author Molly Lambert said of the celeb's relationship, here's a quote, the carnal component is clearly off the charts, but they could also be sweet and funny. Language that was lifted nearly word for word in Grant's letter. Fox and MGK are in love with a capital L, the story also states. Yet another phrase lifted by Grant. <laughs> in another passage, Grant wrote, I feel, <laughs> I feel understood, accepted, loved, and appreciated for who I am at my core. You see my heart. You see my soul. There are few people who know the secret <sighs> of making a heaven here on earth. You're one of those rare people. <laughs> Grant's spokesperson said the sugary sweet lines were ripped verbatim from the 1947 film The Bishop's Wife. The Bishop's Wife! <laughs> so she's stealing from the Bishop's Wife to give him material to flog the Bishop. <laughs> That's fucking classic. I mean, let's stop here for a moment. Again, when we start reading the article and you hear that she wrote this email and you hear what's in it, it sounds a little suspicious, and then the more details you hear, she's running out of material, she's going to movies and <laughs> magazines. To come well, that, that's what I was going to say, is because I had seen a couple of, I, I'm in love with a capital L, and I didn't know it was from, you know, Hoochie and Coochie, or whoever had wrote it in the magazine article or whatever, but we heard Vince's attempts at dirty texting, right? 
and it sounded like a fucking teenage boy. Well, what does a fucking teenage boy want to hear? Oh, I love you. You make me come out and die. So he, he's, it's like he's fucking... <clears throat> do you see where I'm going with this? It's like, it, I thought he was telling her what to write based on how fucking odd it sounded for a 43-year-old woman to be using verbiage like that, but she's speaking to a goddamn emotionally stunted teenager in there somewhere, and she's stealing shit from fucking pop culture to do it. Because So, of course, a, a normal adult man or woman wouldn't be, you know, speaking in these verbiages, would they, even if they were trying to do dirty shit? The diddle letters? And again, let me read you some of this, and you ask yourself how it sounds. Does it sound natural? Does it sound like someone talking to their companion? Or does it sound like someone said, it would really be a solid for me if you could write this letter about how I create heaven on earth. That's yes. what she just said. Heaven on earth. <laughs> and it was on Wednesday night. They got to stay up late. Here's some of the letter. Here we go again. Draft 24, which is even harder to begin after we spilled our hearts to each other a few nights ago. In some ways, I wonder what's left to say after a beautiful evening like that. And then I realize there's so much more to say to my best friend, my love, and my everything. Is there any way that I can adequately tell you how much my life has changed for the better since we met? How can I put into words, let alone a lawsuit? No, how can I put into words how you have filled the void in my heart that I thought would remain empty forever? True love cannot be found where it does not exist, nor can love be hidden where it does not exist. It's not something that you find, it's something that finds you. That sounds like a song lyric of some kind. If she hadn't, and I'm not blaming her for plagiarizing this. I mean, if she was forced to do this or felt compelled to do this for one reason or another, and it's ridiculous, plagiarism's okay, I think, in, in those kind of situations. But if it wasn't plagiarism, I would say she has a career writing some kind of, you know, nice book, a self-help book, or nice quotes. I don't know what kind of... Actually, I don't Har know if there's Har any market... Harlequin romance, maybe? Maybe cards. I don't know if there's any market for this now that maybe, I think about Maybe it. the... Whoever the... Uh... Hallmark competitor is these days, but th that's, a, and you've got to think that what's the matter with Vince mentally, either he believes that she's talking about an 80 year old silent movie villain here. And he's got to deep down realize and he probably did. That's why he fucking tried to make himself look like Wayne Newton. That, so how could he, as, as the uh, adult intelligent human being that I experienced, believe this shit coming from her or anyone it, in that position so was he just using it for for wanking purposes but then goddamn can't she get to the it, it, that's what he's wanking on you you hung the moon and the stars and you know the made the waterfalls what the fuck how does that conversation happen how does he sit down and say listen I need you to write a testimonial about how much you love me and say all these flowery things about how great I am. Like, what reasoning did he get? What, like, what would be the reason he would ask for that? That's what I would want to know. Like, but, but listen, li and this print is so small. If I get too close to the microphone and you can hear me breathing and it screws up the audio, I'm so sorry. Oh, no, you're not. But I, I'm looking at the thought of you makes the day begin. The tune of your laugh makes my heart sing along. Your smiles, your ups, your lows, your brow furrows, your joys and your woes are second nature to me now. That's a song! Like breathing out and breathing in. That's a fucking song! She's stealing... That's the, the... What is that song? It's a, it's a classic. It's a Frank Sinatra. Well, what do you think of this part here? As I always say to you, the answer, my friend, is blowing in the wind. Oh, good the God. The answer is blowing in the wind. But it's so long, she's got to, He must have given her a word count, because nobody would... This is not a love letter that you it's would over write three pages. to someone... Yeah. Small print typed, over three pages. 
The thought of you makes the day begin. The shadow of your smile. I don't know. Here's what's crazy, too. It says it's not even the only letter she's written. How many times does she have to write multi-page essays about how much Vince loves her? Ooh. Well, there's a few other. uh, Let me just scan this uh, document here. The sense of heaven is a very real thing. Is is the very thing I want to give back to you. I want nothing more for you to come home to love and happiness. Even though so few people know about us, the most freeing feeling this year came when we got to act like a couple. Openly. Freely. When Mikey, Paul, and the chef were around us. We never had that luxury before. (laughs) What a treat it was. Way back up now. Let's not bury the lead. Who are Mikey, Paul, and the chef? It doesn't sound like the morning team at fucking WQMF. Vince, we got a problem. Call the chef. (laughs) (laughs) Who's that guy? (laughs) He's the the cleaner, baby. This is my friend, the chef. He'll just be in the corner. I mean, is everybody going to jump on Paul Levesque? It, but it could be, you know, Paul Capistrano. We don't well, know who, the, because would would Paul Levesque be hanging around with Vince and his personal chef, or is was that? And it's Mickey, not Mikey. You, let me let me just correct myself. Mickey, well, not you, Mikey. Well, yeah, Mickey Finn, maybe. But if um, when I went to the Hall of Fame in 2017, and hadn't been around Vince in, in nearly 20 years or whatever the fuck. And when I went to his office to speak to him briefly, and I've recounted that story, it's not for this purpose, but he had two assistants. He had two guys that were dead. And this this was never something that Vince had in the 90s. He did at TV during the Attitude Era, he didn't have a goddamn assistant. He had Briscoe or he had Patterson, he had me, or he had Bruce, or he had JR, or whatever, but he didn't have assistants that carried his bags and ran his suits back and forth from the hotel and pressed his shit. I'm wondering if he had his two assistants and fucking his personal chef well, here in we, this public gathering. According to Callis, who's the attorney for Janelle Grant, she did an interview. Uh, you know, I saw it and I don't remember where it was. I want to say it was with WrestleNomics or something, but don't quote me. Maybe I'm wrong there. Uh, but according to her, the Paul being referred to is Paul Mangieri an executive assistant at WWE. You know, I just made up Paul Capistrano a minute ago, and it'd probably be preferable, but I didn't realize that we were, I was maligning the Italians. People familiar with WWE also said that Mickey Mangieri worked as an assistant to Vince McMahon. Boom! So apparently the Mangieri brothers were part of Vince McMahon's crew. And that was what the Mangieri she, brothers and the chef, man, it sounds like they got some crazy scene going on there. But but that was what I'm not, we're not trying to make allegations that there was any kind of five way uh, fecal philia going on. But what I'm saying, that's what she considered. She was probably bugging him. Hey, why, why can't we be seen in public? What's going on? So, Oh, I'll bring pre. And he had his assistants and the chef. At a private thing, and and she felt like that was in public, or I don't what the fuck, I don't know. Can I ask you a question? Um, you know, and we don't know everything, obviously, but other than estate planning reasons, is there any reason why Vince and Linda can't get divorced? I mean, they're not living together. Everyone knows that they're not together. <sighs> Vince has obviously for a long time been into other things, and they always say that they're. You know, Vince said it according to Janelle Grant's lawsuit. They have a thing on paper. It's an understanding. Why? Like, why can't Vince? I mean, now he's going out with other women. I remember there was pictures of him having a birthday party at Cena and Pat McAfee, I think, and a few people went to. And it was Vince with a woman that looked somewhat appropriate in her 50s, 60s, maybe with some surgery. I don't know. <laughs> All right, now. No, no, I'm being honest. I was trying to, feel like, you know, how old is Vince McMahon dating? He's 80. But why do they have to stay together? I mean, if, I mean to her thing, Unless it's just he didn't want her around because he didn't see her that way. You know, what would that be? Isn't it the law that a wife does not have to testify against her husband in court unless she wants to? I think, I don't know if it's that simple other than in in (laughs) movies, but there's something to that, yes. Maybe, Maybe Linda is still in some fashion you know, being compensated for her 
you know, standing in the in the McMahon family, they've got some kind of uh, personal agreement that everybody's happy with the way it is. Uh, you know, I don't know otherwise than, as you said, it, it has got to involve financial planning or potential prevention of criminal procedure, one would think. Yeah, Tony Khan didn't even have to ask Edge to go out there and read a love letter on TV. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he just, but at least he didn't rip off the fucking birds. So again, now that you've seen this story and we've read a good portion of it, we've read some of this letter here and we've seen the photograph of her hand and the actual text message exchange, at least according to her side, what are your thoughts on this? Well, th that's the thing is that none of this sounded natural on either side. And it sounded to me like when when I we heard Vince's texts, it sounds to me like the the equivalent kind of thing, unnatural shit that he would want in return, rather than someone in, unless somebody can do a goddamn a mental evaluation of this woman and find out that she's stark staring out of her mind. She didn't write this shit because she wanted to. Yeah, that's uh, you know so or, or that give me three pages like what? yeah I, I mean it's almost like it's like a fucking book report assignment give me three pages on you know why i'm the goddamn center of the universe and I, it, it, I again vince mcmahon it, this has to be a, a spank material for him it for in some fashion that he asked for, in, in, if not verbatim, he had tell me whatever the fuck. I don't know because the intelligent human being that I interacted with that still had his various quirks wouldn't buy this shit as legitimate for a second because it's so far fetched. And one would think that even Vince would catch the fucking stuff ripped off from 50 years ago. Even if he doesn't know who, you know, she got the other stuff from Beyonce or whoever the fuck, right? I, I, I don't. Uh, yeah, based on his look, you thought he was watching a lot of those old films. It, it looked like he was in them. But that's timeless you know, Vince McMahon. <laughs> he should be. Yeah, he, when he comes into court, they're going to shoot him in black and white. But with I'm, a chef, I, uh, you know. I, <sighs> I'm just I'm I'm stunned that that well with, with the idea that, that he would he would be interested in this plethora of effluvia. Well, I guess to end this specific to what this article is, and at least according to what I think is being alleged here by uh, Ms. Grant's attorney, the idea that the McMahon side leaked this letter to show that she did it, and that they have the receipts they say to show that. She was told to do it. In fact, here's where she pulled all the dialogue from. <laughs> just the idea that this was a tactic. This was a public, not even a smear tactic, but just something to get some positive PR for the other side. What do you think of that? Uh, and well, again, speaking of the other side, how is it that uh, uh, Rabinowitz and Harris, what's their name, the law firm? The the uh, the firm that Azowitz, Torres and um, Benson and Hedges or whatever the fuck they are. There was another person, yeah. Yes, there's another person involved. How could they represent MLW against the WWE, but be representing in cases that almost look like they're overlapping here? In cases that. Are uh, they're representing the WWE in a different case uh, uh, against them? Isn't that some kind of conflict? And Wow, that's crazy, too. That's the last case of Jerry McDivitt. Vince went with the lawyers that were in Jerry McDivitt's last case against him. And, and, and how, how are we to determine it? This doesn't, it, this doesn't make either side look particularly good, but it makes Vince look even more bizarre that he would encourage behavior like this if it was unsolicited to begin with, doesn't it? That, that, I mean, here's a Grant's rambling 2,200 word email. 2,200 words? Yes, was taken, 
from Grant's laptop as part of an investigation on behalf of WWE's board huh. by white white shoe law firm Simpson, Thatcher, and Bartlett. So I'm glad to see Les Thatcher still in the thick of things and is expected to appear in court filings as the case progresses. Well, that's it. Hold on. That's very interesting. It was taken, the way that was phrased, it was taken from her laptop as part of the investigation. So the investigation had her laptop. Did Vince know there was an investigation and tell her to, like, what did she do with the letter? Did she send it to him? And no, well, yes, but I'm, I'm thinking that it's still in, why am, I, why am I telling you how the internet works, you fucking technological motherfucker? They, if she sent it, they've got it on her side, too. It could have been five years ago. See, you ought to close, no, close the, no, close the window. That. The air is getting to you, going to your head. I get that, but if they had it, again, they, they got access somehow to, well, through her, obviously, to her laptop, and they found it there. But it's almost like it was planted to be there, unless she sent it to Vince and he put it in an envelope and said, here's a you know testimonial to the board of directors about what a wonderful lover I am or whatever that well, no, it's on his email too. Right. Yes. Oh boy. I'm not well, going to, you know, we're, we're going <laughs> to, we're going to stop the email talk right here. Hey, one well, last hey, thing. The, uh, the point, hold on. The point I was going to make is that if this was something that was written to him, even if he didn't want her to write it, one would think the average uh, 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 unaffiliated observer would think that this 80 year old billionaire, if he received an unsolicited letter like this from someone in his social circle, he would not encourage this type of obviously obsessive, weird behavior and, <laughs> and verbiage and language going on. <laughs> And might try to counsel this woman down off the fucking ledge. If you got a letter like this from your wife, you'd be like, oh my God, what the fuck? Yeah, no, you're, you're <laughs> on the phone with the fucking 911. Give me Bellevue. So that, that's what I'm saying. The fact, if, if they're releasing this as a defense of him, yes, he, that, well, then that means that he apparently encouraged and or allowed this psychopathic fucking behavior to go on with someone that he was interacting with personally, which doesn't look good considering the things that he's goddamn accused of. Ah. Vince, she's suing you. I was prepared for this. Chef, give me the letter. Like, well, like what is this? <laughs> kind of tactic is this? But uh, Jim, one last thing in this uh, article from the New York mm -hmm. Post. As, as Swami barks at someone. Uh, Laura Nitus's attorney, Edward oh, Brennan. He's still, he's still around. Edward Brennan declined to comment on the letter, but noted that the 61-year-old ex-pro wrestler, known in the ring as Johnny Ace, a.k.a. the Drizzling Shits, <laughs> here's a quote, denies all of the allegations made against him in the complaint and asserts that he is a victim in this matter, not a protagonist. I can't wait to hear that testimony. Hopefully that won't be sealed. Hopefully that'll trickle out or leak or drip hey listen if there was ever a case for like court tv or someone to fight for the rights <laughs> to wrestling gets ratings there's never been a wrestling trial on tv there you go come on there you go can you imagine the number it would it would beat smackdown you got t johnny ace testifying about being a victim in a sexual three-way with an 80 year old billionaire who was also defecating on people's heads. And then when I left, Mrs. Baba, I went to work for Vince. Hey! Nobody involved in there had a billion dollars. <laughs> well, um, he was very wealthy, though, Baba. True. But still, there are, there are levels to this shit. Uh, I, I, I can't... Yeah, I can't wait to hear Laurinaitis's, uh account of the proceedings from his viewpoint. That's what I'm waiting for. The defense calls Brock Lesnar to the stand. If, no, no. <laughs> at, 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 I don't know if they can extradite him from Saskatoon. But uh, think about this. I would, is, is Laura Nidus, was he required to write any letters to Vince? Vince, you're the greatest boss I've ever had. You create heaven on earth. I love you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, Jim, uh, uh, just like this segment just went off the rails, sometimes yeah. life goes off the rails and you need something to, you know, give you a little bit of 
Uh, su mental support. You want to rest. You want to rest. Clue. That's what it is. Give me a clue. Well, what I was going to say is maybe you want to rest. Maybe you need a good rest. Maybe you're a little achy from things that happen. Maybe you need yes. some CBD and the best CBD there is from CB Distillery. You think, I'll tell you, you don't want to get any of that goddamn off-brand CBD. No, never. I'll tell you, folks, do not take the brown CBD. Only go for the good stuff from cbdistillery.com. Because a person does not want to mess with some of this contraband CBD that's been floating around the area. And if, as a matter of fact, there is a tent set up right outside of Last Manor. No. Where they have medics. If you have had a bad trip on the illicit CBD, you can get treatment there and lollipop. That is not true. However, if you end up here, Wavy Gravy may give you some granola. Well, that's... I, I thought he made gravy. Granola. At Woodstock, that's granola. when they introduced the hippies to granola. Well, fuck, I've liked him all these years because I thought he was the man that invented gravy. You thought wavy gravy invented God gravy? Damn it. Yeah, I thought if I ever met him, I'd get some gravy. The hog farm? God damn it. Well, what, what goes on pork better than gravy? That's where the connection... <laughs> anyway, let me guess, folks out there... Your medicine cabinet is crammed full of stuff that doesn't work. You can't sleep. You're sore. You're hurt. You're stressed out. You got anxiety. Tornadoes are coming. Get in your safe space. Your lives are in danger in three minutes over in Horse Branch. Well, that's how it is for everybody. But now you can do something. But you can take all that stuff out of your medicine cabinet, medicine cabinet, in quotation marks, jerk it right out of there, put it in a box, and dump it out the window. Of course, if you live in one of these big city high rises, you could be committing mass murder, but hey, that's a chance people got to take in a big city these days. If you're walking down the street, you're fair game. But folks, once you dump all that stuff out of your cabinet, your window, reset your health with CBD from CB Distillery. And here's a, you're going to have more room left over too. Because without all of that, just one big old jar of the CBD from CB Distillery set right in the middle of your medicine cabinet. Hell yeah, you can hide your porn in there now. What? what? You could do whatever you want with the rest of the room Hi in that on. medicine cabinet. Hide your porn. How do you think people consume porn in 2024? Well, on DVD. It's space age now. No more VHS, Brian. What are those DVDs in the medicine cabinet? Oh, surely not porn. Well, no, of course not. Put them in a plain brown wrapper. But anyway, you get, you got all kinds of room in that medicine cabinet without all that goddamn dreck and that contraband and then all that over-the-counter, uh, up-your-ass type of stuff that doesn't work because CB Distillery's targeted formal formulations, targeted formulations, I've had some CBD today, folks, are made from the highest quality clean ingredients, no fluff, no fillers, just pure effective CBD solutions. And they support in two non-clinical surveys, Brian, I'll have you know, 81% of customers experienced more calm, 80% said CBD helped better with pain after physical activity, and an impressive 90% said they slept better with CBD, and 4% said they were able to ride the edge of a tornado. <laughs> no, that, <laughs> that from is... From top to bottom without no, being harmed. I've got the copy in front of me. That's not in the copy. Well, I, I, it's because the only people at the 4% talked to was me. But if you struggle out there with a health concern and it's kicking your balls and you haven't found relief, well, make your change. Change, change, uh, turn and face the strange changes. Go to CB Distillery like the over 2 million other customers. Now, is that 10 people that have been there 200,000 times, or is that 2 million individual people when they say 2 million customers? I think that's the connotation, 2 million individual people. Well, there you go. And you can, you're allowed to come back, though, twice, aren't you? It's not like one you and can, done. You can return as often as you like. They are a store that does not shut out customers. Well, then they've got 2 million customers going multiple times, so that's a lot of million people. And they got a 100% money-back guarantee. Every time you buy something there, it's a 100% guarantee you get your money back. Right? Well, how do they make any money? Well, their stuff is good, so people aren't really asking for their money back. The guarantee... Oh, 
Oh, the is there for a reason. They really believe in their fine products, so they're able to make that comfortably. But you only get your money back if you ask for it, and you got to give the shit back, I guess. But it's not like well, they just you buy something and one hundred percent they give you your money back every time. Well, we See, don't have to worry about it that. Sense. It's fine. If someone's going to buy CBD product, this is the CBD product to buy. So we don't have to worry about the returns. Well, right it, now. it would be a heck of a deal if you on anything if you could buy it and then there was a hundred percent guarantee they'd give you your money back no matter what. But if you've got to not enjoy it or be displeased or whatever and ask them for the money back, well, that's not anything revolutionary. But still, it's a nice thing to have. All right, well, another nice thing to have is a good night's sleep, which you will get with Helix Sleep. I can use one right now, Jim. What? Where are we going? We're going to CB Distillery, the promo code, and all the other fun stuff. Yes, there we are. You want to get 20% off on the CBD? That's uh, almost, C is almost gone. You just have BD left. 20% off, go to cbdistillery.com and use the code JCE. You're going to get 20% off these fine products cbdistillery.com and they have a plethora of them folks code jce for 20 percent off everything in the house and 100 percent money back guarantee but only if you're not happy and you ask for your money back and then they'll give it to you but you're going to be a prick if you do that because this stuff's going to make you ecstatic you'll be able to hear colors you won't but it's a nice thought to have and Another nice thing to have is CB Distillery. Once again, promo code JCE.